Hello and welcome to our channel. Today we'll be showing you how to combine files from a folder using Power Query when those files have slightly different columns. If you have raw data downloaded from a system in an unformatted Excel file or you are using CSVs, this video can be useful for you. As you can see, we have three files. They have some columns in common. However, there are three that are not present in all of them. Let's first get connected to those files. I have them stored in my C in a folder called files to process. Once we connect to those files, we can notice two issues. The first one is that we are missing some columns. We don't have contact2, contact type 2 or line address2 present in this final query. This is because Excel is using the book3 file as a sample file. And since that one doesn't have all the columns that we need, it ignores all the columns that are not present in that specific file that is being used as a sample. The second issue is that we have some mixed data. For example, in this column 5, we have address line 1, contact2 and address line 1. This is because Power Query is placing our columns based on their position in the files and not based on their actual header names. To fix that, what we need to do is let Power Query know that the first row in each of our files is the actual header and not data. Every time we connect to a folder from Power Query, it creates a query called transform sample file. So what we need to do is to indicate Excel in this transform sample file query that the first row is our headers. We do this by using this option called use first row as headers. And now we have the correct header from our tables in the files. Before moving on, we need to make sure we delete this change type step that was added to the query. This is because not all the columns will be present in all the files, so it's better to remove it and that way we avoid errors when we refresh with new data. So once this is ready, we go back to our main query that has all the files combined and we see an error. This is because the change type step that Power Query automatically added is making reference to the old columns that we have, so we need to delete that step too. Once we have identified correctly our headers, the issue of having mixed data in the same column no longer happens. However, we are still missing the second part in which we make Power Query recognizes all the columns that we know that should be in the final query. If we go back one step, we see here that we have all of our files listed in this table. But when we expand, Power Query is getting the data from each of the files using this function that is called table.expandTableColumn. As you can see, the third argument of this function is a list of column names, which is what we have here. So what you need to do next is to have a list of all the columns that you want present in the final report. I know that I want all of this. Next, you have to add it to queries and connections by using this option called from table range. This is going to take us back to Power Query Editor. I'm going to rename this to columns. And since the third argument of the function that Excel is using to expand each of the files is a list, so we're going to go to the Transform tab and then click on Convert to List. The icon next to my query name has changed. So we go back to our file to process query, which is our main query, and we need to replace the whole third argument that has table.column names and write the name of the query that contains the list of columns. So we're gonna write columns. Then we hit enter, and once that's done, I can see all my columns there, and they are placed in the very same order that I have them here. And after applying those steps, we no longer have the issue of data being mixed and missing columns. That's it for this video. We hope you find this useful. We are PowerGI.